Welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. Uh, we are he- back. We are back. It is good to be back. Ooh. It is, okay. Is it good? Are we cool? All right. Cool. It is good to be back. Um, ooh, sorry about that. Uh, we got a good one for you today. We're going to get into the main event on the Pro Box card. We did one of the undercard bets yesterday. Uh, this is a really, really good pro-, pro Box card. We got Rod Kalashik. Against Sullivan Barrera, two names I, I hope you guys are, are familiar with. Uh, two former world title challenges. It's a really intriguing fight. I will get into that. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blogger, all forms of social media. The Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight. Train how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. I don't bet on boxing myself or bet on anything anymore. But if you guys do, I'm going to show you how to consistently make money, how to bring down the house. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing. I do. I'm going to show you how to make money uh, every single week. And like I said, we're 18 and four, I believe, over the last five weeks. So uh, we're making money hand over fist every single week. This week will be no different. We have fights on Wednesday and Saturday this week. Uh, We're covering the Wednesday fights right now. Also, join my Patreon. The Patreon, the link is in the description. It's files a month. It's a lock of the week. Uh, You can request I do a a video, break down a video of any fight you, you want me to do. I will uh, bring you a video. Uh, we're bringing you one later in this week. Uh, I just got my Patreon. Uh, and all, there's a, a ton of perks as well. The free t-shirt. Ask me anything. Um, join the Patreon. Show the sports. Just follow us a month. The link is in the description. Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. All right. Rad Kalachik. He's best known for losing to Better Be back in 2019. He looked like kind of a passive opponent at that particular time. Uh, a lot of people weren't sure why he was in a position to fight for a world title, but he's a pretty good fighter. Straight up and down, he fires a jab. You know, at first glance, he's, he's kind of basic. Nice little slight subtle movement while marching forward. He can make you miss, make you miss. He can step back, make you miss, step in, step in. He does some things well with his movement. Good, subtle movement. I, I like it. His head's not really in a line. He's very good at long range. He doubles up the jab, doubles up the jab. He's not a high-volume guy per se, but he keeps the punches coming. He keeps the punches coming. Some, one thing I really like about him. Fairly athletic. He's a patient stalker. Like how would you describe him in the ring? He's a patient stalker who wants to uh, create space. He's long and rangy. Uh, 6'3", 76-inch reach. For 175, he's tall, he's long, he uses it. He's fairly athletic for a guy his size. He uses that. He uses his natural gifts really well. He's really good from long range. I I would describe him as a pretty good sniper. Good snappy jab. Seems to have good power. There's a lot to like about him. Now, when he can he beat better beef? No. Can he beat Bavol? Probably not. But after that, I mean. He's going to be as good as anyone in the division. I, I really believe that. Good, accurate power shots. He lands clean. He lands on the button with a little bit of pop. Decent speed, decent athlete, good movement, good feet. There's a lot to like about him. He has some – he had some success in small spots with, with Better Beef, things that you could take. Not, you know, Ultimately, he got stopped and beat down by Better Beef, but Better Beef is a half a pound killer. But he, he did some things well. Like if you were scouting him, you could pick up things that he did well that you would want to implement against better beef. He gets caught in exchanges too much. That's not his – he's got decent skills on the inside, but that's not his strike. That's not where he wants to be. He's willing to exchange. I, I think that's his biggest problem. He's a much better boxer. He's a much more skilled craftsman than Barrero. But I don't think this is a guy that wants to be on on – on the inside and exchanges. He wants to be on the outside. He wants to be using limited movement. He wants to be using he wants to throw his punches straight. Straight long. You know, down the pipe. Don't pull your punches. Completely straight punches. Keep the guys at bay. He's got decent speed. He can do that. He, that's a game plan he can execute. Exchanging on the inside, again, it's not a weakness. It's just not his strength. That's not his game. That's not where you want to see him. But it's a pretty good craftsman. Sullivan Barrera is a guy I, I've never really liked. He's 42 years old now. Uh, he's inactive. He's had just one fight since 
2019, one fight since the pandemic. Um, and he got stopped by Gilberto Ramirez three years ago. And then he hasn't fought since. I'm not expecting a lot out of him. I don't really, I, I don't think he's a very good offensive fighter. He's a strong, come forward fighter. He's slow and old. He throws wide punches. He's got a good jab. When he uses it, he can use it as a, as a, as a tool. He can use it as a, as a set of his power shots. He also it's it, it, it's snappy. It's got some pop on. It. He can hurt you with his jab. He can he can affect the fight with with just his jab because it's a, it's a good punch. He wants to come forward, but he throws wide. So he's really a guy like uh, Kladzik is going to just stand inside, throw punches straight down the pipe, and just land shots on him. I think this is kind of one-sided. Barrera gets sloppy. He gets impatient. And he, and he starts lunging. He starts throwing wild shots. He's an easy guy to counter. He's aged well. But, like, he doesn't look like he's slowed down a ton. But he's still, he's 42. And he's been an active I don't think he's going to be highly competitive in this fight. He gets tagged a lot. He gets hit a lot. I think Klodzik probably stops him. Throws a lot of wide shots, like I said. He's just not a good offensive fighter, in my opinion. I've always thought this guy was was overrated. I mean, he can make life tough for you. He can make life ugly because he's strong and he's got a decent jab. And he'll, he'll clinch and he'll hold and he'll push and he'll you know he can he can land if you let him land. His power is probably pretty decent. He's just slow and plotting. And you can get him to show up. And I, I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to see the inactivity, the rust. I think we're going to see a lot of warts on uh, on Sullivan Brown. And this may end up being the last time we see him in a big fight. So let's take a look at how we're going to make money in this fight. All right. Rodrick Kalajic. Rod Kalajic. Minus 1800. It's, 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 it's huge. It's massive. And I, I think so. We're going to make a two times bet on that. Unfortunately, a two times bet on that is only going to make us $11.11. So those are the odds. What, what they're telling me is he's basically an 18 to 1 favorite. I mean, I, I think that's inappropriately wide, but it's how we're going to make money. There's no chance Burroughs going to win this fight. We're also going to take it one by stop. That gives a little better odds, minus 300. So minus 300 is going to put you at uh, $100. Uh, $100 on that is going to be $33. So we're going to make $44.44 on this fight on a $300 bet. Uh, so we're able to bring it down quite a bit, um, but he's got to stop him. I, I think it's, it's a fairly safe bet that he stops him. I, I don't – I mean, it's either he's either going to put him out or it's going to be a mercy stoppage. I can't see this fight going 12 rounds. It that's um a 10 rounds. That that seems really far fetched to me. It's going to be a stoppage, I would imagine. The odds maker suggests it's going to be a stoppage, but it's not so overwhelming. It's just uh you know minus 300. It's scheduled 10 rounds, I thought so. I I can't see this fight going 10 rounds. Um, you might, I can see it going over six and a half, but he's going to get the stoppage. Uh, Kalajic is, is a good all around fighter, good offensive fighter. He's not easy to hit. He can press the action. He can press when he wants. And he's fighting a guy who's 42 old and shot. And Brer has been stopped before he got stopped. In his last fight with Gilberto Ramirez, he was stopped by Bavall. I see this being a stop. It. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. But that is the bet. Uh, two times bet on uh, a Kalajic winning and then one times bet on um, Kalajic winning by TK or stoppage. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Booking on all forms. Social media, Boxing Booking, that's for every single major fight. Show you how to consistently bring down the house and make money betting on the sport of boxing. There's always a bull market somewhere, guys. Please like... Uh, like the video, subscribe, join the Patreon. The Patreon is just files a month. You get the lock of the week. You get the free T-shirt. You can ask me anything. I will handicap, break down a fight. Any fight you want, just let me know. I'm uh, doing one later in the week for a Patreon. Uh, and I think uh, – and uh, also subscribe to us on Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene. It is March 12th, 2024 from Texas to the world. 
Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe.